Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. It is Memorial Day weekend, the kickoff to summer, and what a wild and wet summer it's going to be. It's going to be partying, boozing it up at the beach, buds and suds, real fun, splishing and splashing. What a joyous time we're going to have this summer. I mean, could anything be more fun? Masks and gloves and spikes. And wave runners, jet skis, beach balls and corona balls and just, you know, make of it what you will. The fun's there if you find it. The fun is there if you find it. Ventilators and fireworks. What is summer? Beaches are opening up. I guess they have a drones. Drones will fly over to beaches, tell you to social distance in the water. That'll be nice, won't it? Won't that be nice? You're on the beach and a drone goes, please keep six feet of distance. Be nice. Just you'll be like, is that a jellyfish? You'll see it's just a drone. Right. You'll see just drones in the water swimming around. Is that a shark? No, it's a robotic. It's a robotic Reminder to stay six feet away from another human being. Isn't that nice? What a fun summer it's going to be. I'm trying to do, I'm on these, some of these dating apps, man. The nightmare, the hell of some of these dating apps. People are just really, first of all, the humor on dating apps, like the cute, cutesy humor. Like the great thing about people that are really hot is that they never have to communicate effectively. That's such an important part of really hot people's relationships is because their commu their communication's all physical. So re when you see really hot people talk to each other, they just giggle because they're just want to fuck each other the whole time. And they're just thinking about how much they want to fuck the other person. And then they're just like laughing at that. They're like giggling. They're like, Oh my God. Oh, the bread's good. I wanted to be your dick. But other <laughs> people have to like actually try to relate to other people. And it's nightmarish. Like they're on these dating apps. Like, one guy goes, if you don't like Disney, like, we'll get along if you like Disney. It's like, you have a you have a Disney ultimatum? Like, what is wrong with you? You have a Disney deal breaker? Just the, the dumb jokes. That, and also the fuck Trump shirts and the, like, that's your life? That you don't like Trump? That's your whole... That's what you you that's what you're selling? That you 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 don't like Trump? There's nothing else except that. How sad. How deeply tragic your life must be. And all these dating app questions are like, if there was a movie about your life, what would it be? It's like these stupid, dumb, meaningless you know, cutesy, fun questions. You're supposed to have, like, cute banter. You're supposed to, like, comment on people's questions and everything like that. It's so worthless, you know? Like, you look at these. My favorite thing to do alone is listen to vibey music and chill. This is These are real people. Fact about me that surprises people. I speak Spanish fluently. I mean, what? I, I wanted to write, like, fact about me that surprises someone. I killed a woman. <laughs> Something like that. That's real humor. Not some goofy shit. That's something, like, actually funny. My love language is acts of service. I mean, how sick are these people? My personal brand is dark humor as a defense coping mechanism. That's somebody, and I guarantee they have a horrible sense of humor. God. It's just so bad out there, man. I'm not saying I'm surprised, but I'm able to come up with better answers than this. What I order for the table every time somebody goes mozzarella sticks every time. Where are you? Where are you eating? You trash bag. Gay guys always think they're the star of their own movie. 
So they love things like this. They're, they're, they're incapable of realizing that there are other people out there and that they are not interesting. They're not stars. They're not, they, the, the whole show does not need to be centered around them. But it's not possible for many of them because many of them were told they were very special their whole entire life. People told me I was special, uh, but I, they were right. See the difference? They were correct. But a lot of other people were getting bad information, fake news. The summer is here and the beaches are opening and uh, it's going to be very fun to see uh, how this plays out. Uh, I don't know anything about virus transmission, so we shall see. CDC was like, by the way, it doesn't really live on surfaces. Our bad. Thought it lived on surfaces. You know how you were wiping down your groceries for the last three months, frantically scrubbing every surface you came in contact with? Well, we were wrong about that. Sorry, we figured we would err on the side of caution and just tell you that this thing's trying to kill you uh, on every way, on inanimate objects, out of the mouths of people. We just figured that the default was to have you terrified of everything. Not only people, but desks, elevator buttons, anything. Now, I'm, I'm sure it is possible transmission, but they say that transmission is actually rather unlikely. The great Ray Kump will be coming up in the broadcast later on. He is not dead. That was a rumor floating around. Ray Kump is alive and wild as ever. And when he comes on the show today, he drops some, I mean, things we should probably edit out. He's completely, <laughs> he's just, a, he's an untamed man. You know, he is just, I believe I asked him how he was doing with the quarantine one time. And he said, I'm no longer in a dark room. I have a sense of time. Yeah. That was his answer. I am no longer in a dark room. I have a sense of time. So just to give you an idea of, of, of what you're dealing with there with the great Ray Comp when he joins us as well. Thank you, everybody, for retweeting, you know, or, or sharing on Instagram the Corona Ball video that we made where I wore a Corona Ball costume and went around Los Angeles. I did not think my career was going to be this, but it is. Um, we live in, a, a, you know, life is an unending series of nightmares. And that is, I got rid of my manager, who I'd been with for three years. Good guy, but we just had to part ways. I wanted a real Hollywood manager. I've signed with somebody by the name of Ghislaine Maxwell. And she is going to be representing me. We'll put her info on the website if anybody wants to contact her. We haven't had a face-to-face -face meeting yet, but she seems very excited about the brand. She wants to meet me in a canyon by Malibu late at night. So who knows? She told me to come alone without a cell phone. Weird. These Hollywood managers are weird, you know? Melinda Gates is going to drive me. Melinda Gates said she'll drive me to this meeting with my new Hollywood manager. You know? It would be awkward if I met Bill and Melinda, you know? Yeah. I was like, hey, what's up? Bill Gates is like, did you do a video where you implied that I had sex with a bat <laughs> and gave birth to coronavirus? And I'd have to go, yes, I did. Because you didn't not do that, Bill. You know? But go smash that retweet button. That's the way YouTubers talk. They're like, yo, what's up? It's your boy. It's your boy, Tim Dillon. YouTube, yo, what's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Tim Dillon. Smash that like button. Smash that retweet. Today, we're filling my kiddie pool with Cheerios. <laughs> I don't know why we're doing it, but we're doing it. And it's got 90 million views because we live in a fallen world where people have no families and they're all on opiates and they just want to put makeup on their face and watch me swim around in Cheerios because life's a hell. Anyway, death to anyone that had any talent. Like and subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> Smash that retweet button. Today I'm driving a Lamborghini up a hill. Don't know why. <laughs> but you're going to fucking watch it, love it, and share it. Don't you wish you had a Lamborghini? You've got nothing inside of you. Don't even look. Don't even look for anything to put inside of you. Just like and subscribe. Smash it, baby. That's what YouTube's all about, you know? YouTube's all about. It's like, what if we ate chicken fingers in a hot air balloon? That's like what YouTube content is. 
They're like, like and subscribe. You know, we're spending a lot of money on this video, but I don't care because I want to make you guys happy. I want to make you guys happy. That's why for this video, we're giving my grandma COVID-19. <laughs> That's right. He's just like six kids going, <coughs> just grabbing an old woman yeah. and going, <coughs> just coughing down her yeah. throat. <laughs> we're switching my grandmother's vent ventilator out with an accordion. Like and subscribe. Smash that retweet button. I'm li I've literally never felt... I have no conscience. I'm perfectly suited to succeed in this country. Like and subscribe. Smash the retweet button. My best friend died in front of me and I didn't blink. Smash that retweet button. Like and subscribe. I'm 46 and I dress like a 12 year old. Like and subscribe. <laughs> I'm in my mid 40s. My fan base is nine. Like <laughs> and subscribe. I mean, so we're just trying to succeed in new mediums. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to go into new mediums. It's I'm not perfect. I get it. You know, I'm just you know, I'm just trying to to branch out into the into the new world. We're trying to make funny things. That's all. So go like and subscribe. So go subscribe to the Tim Dillon Show on YouTube. If all of you did that, that would be great. But many of you don't do that, and I don't know why. Because you think you're better because you're listening to this while you jog around and you don't go subscribe. Okay? Support. YouTube's not helping us. Instagram is not going to help us. None of these tech giants are going to help us because we're, you know, we're a little edgy, a little unpredictable. We're funny. It's just funny. Mark Norman had a great point. He goes, edgy just used to mean funny. Right. Like he would go to meetings and they'd be like, yeah, that, that's this thing you're doing is edgy. He'd be like, that's good, right? They'd be like, ugh, we're nervous. But, like, it just meant funny. So all we are here is funny. So go and support us. We appreciate how much you guys support the Patreon. We love that. That's great. Our Patreon episodes are good. But also in the larger scheme of things, we also need to make sure that you guys are out there and, you know, wearing the merch, sharing the episodes, literally being devoted to me in a way that's unhealthy scaring people, losing friends over how much you bring up the videos, stalking me, trying to kill me, <laughs> forcing me to live somewhere else, deep in the Hollywood Hills with security, afraid to leave my house, coming up to me in grocery stores, screaming when you see me, falling down on the street, crying, making it uncomfortable, threatening to kill yourself, killing yourself, coming back to life because it didn't work, telling me that I'm the reason that you came back to life. You met me in the afterlife and I am God. That's the YouTube fame. That's the type of fame that those motherfuckers have, and that's the fame that I deserve. I deserve a fan base of emo psychopaths on the edge of a, a, of a mass shooting or killing themselves, but instead they decide to consume my content. I deserve Instagram DMs and Twitter DMs from people telling me that I'm the only thing that stands between them and putting a gun in their mouth. That's what I deserve. That's the kind of fan base I deserve. Not these fucking lackluster 30-year-olds that may see me at Zanies and may not. I mean a hardcore group of sick fucks that need help. Cutters, people that are afraid to leave their home. The only reason they do it is on the off chance that they'll bump into me in a parking lot. And it'll be like Moses in the burning bush and they fall and start screaming. They, they drop their phone because they're shaking. They go into some Parkinson's-like frenzy whenever they see me and people that even look like me, fat people and lesbians, anybody that looks like me, they do a double take and their pulse quickens and their heart goes up. That's the kind of fan base I deserve. I'm sick of these comedy fan lackluster. Maybe we'll see him when he comes into Tulsa. Maybe he won't. I want a digital fan base of psychopaths, kids that are sent home from school because they're, 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 they might self arm and I want the only thing to be in their phone is a picture of me and they've carved an X into my face because I am a god to them I am a deity that's online fame and I want it <laughs> just buy the shirt that's what I'm saying buy the life in the big city shirt you see these YouTubers that go to malls people go crazy they start screaming for them these TikTokers why am I not in the hype house or the Sway House. Sway House, yeah. I think Sway House is better as well. Why am I? Why can't I be Big Huddy? There's a Little Huddy. <laughs> I should be Big Huddy. Little Huddy is a TikToker who's got three trillion followers, and he's he weighs nineteen pounds, 
And he's just like, he looks like Ryder Strong, the kid who was in uh, Boy Meets World. And oh, his name yeah. is Chase Hudson. It's like, yeah. could there be a more tiktok -y name than Chase Hudson? It's like, my name is Chase Hudson. My name is Madison Chase. I'm rich and you're not, you know. My name is 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 uh, is Gucci Lamborghini. You know, it's like, and and this this kid is just a massive massive success. And I don't begrudge anyone their success. He's successful because like they'll they do a rap song and they sing to it and they they try to avoid the n word. They're like, oh my, not gonna mouth that one. Dance by the pool. They just dance by the pool. That's what it is. Yeah. Just dance by the pool, you know, and God love them. Mm -hmm. But that's what I want to do. I want to be invited to one of these homes and I want to begin to make content with these people. I think I have a lot to add. I think I have a lot. Why? Let's make a dance about imperialism. Let's do it. Let's make a dance about the CIA killing Michael Hastings in front of the tree. Let's do it. A TikTok like, look, here goes the car. We drive the car. Kennedy, we do the Kennedy dance. Like, yeah. why not involve some element of conspiracy thinking in the dance? Mm -hmm. Why not do a Great Depression dance? Where we all were online at like the food bank. People are coughing because they don't have any health insurance. <laughs> I'm just saying I can go to different media. I'm trying to expand the mediums. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just sit here and yell into a microphone while I just get the cab dispatcher fat because that's no reason to not. Cab dispatchers in Long Island were like 7,000 pounds. There were guys <laughs> whose arms just, and they were like, hey, Bobby, do car, do car, headquarters, do car. You just pick that guy up on Ocean Avenue, do car, do car. You pick him up on Ocean? <laughs> yeah. Do car, we just got him. We picked him up on Ocean. All right. You be smoking a cigarette. All right, all right, all right. You got to go down to McDonald's Street. Go to a two car. Go to McDonald's Street. I'm 600 pounds. I'm smoking a cigarette. Go to McDonald's Street, two car. Two car. <laughs> they never left. It was always a small little room in a train station. They yeah. never left it. It was like a little hut. Mm -hmm. And they fit just in the hut. Their <laughs> fat was like, was like literally pouring out of the windows. And they just like, the only movement they did was they would move their hand to their mouth to, uh, with a cigarette. Mm. That was in the old days when you used to take cabs to do cocaine. To get cocaine and do it. You know, not everybody could do cocaine in the Hollywood Hills. Some people have to do it in Long Island in a cab. We used to be able to smoke cigarettes at cabs. There were there were great times in this country, is what I'm saying. You don't know what freedom was. Freedom was stealing money from your family and being able to smoke a cigarette in a cab on the way to get cocaine with a pregnant woman named Michelle. The great Raymond Comp will come up. Uh, is coming up here. This episode of the Tim Dillon Show is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, remember the days when you were always ready to go? It's summer. It's time to fuck. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians. You don't have to go to the doctor, office, or wait in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. Blue Chew works. It's chewable. It's quick. If you need to fuck and you want to fuck, it's time to fuck. It's the summer. Summer is just hot, sweaty sex, and you're not going to be ready if you have a soft, knish like penis. You need to have a hard dick, and you need to get it by chewing the blue, baby. B-L-U-E, chew.com, promo code TIM, to try it free. Okay, they're trying it free. You have nothing to lose, literally nothing to lose. This isn't like getting married or having children where it can go wrong. This is like no investment on your part, no expenditure of any fucking money. Think of how many things you do in your life, getting a new job, even making a new friend, buying a house. So many things, you make an investment of time and emotion. You don't have to do any of that here. It's a simple click of the mouse and they send it to your home, discreet packaging. So when your mother, who you live with, finds it because the bar that you worked at closed, she could just hand it to you and think maybe it's something reputable that someone is sending you because you're a high, you know, uh, you're, you're in good standing and you're a member of the community. She doesn't know it's chewable dick pills. 
You don't even have a sexual partner. You just want your dick to get hard. You want to wake up, look at it, and go back to bed. But the point is you need confidence. Blue Chew gives you that confidence. Blue Chew allows you to walk in any situation consensual and have your penis nice and hard and ready to do the job. Ready to hammer that pussy, that asshole, that mouth. That pussy, that asshole, that mouth. That's what That's what uh, Broadway show is going to be soon. My neck, my back, my pussy, and my crack. That's what Broadway shows will be soon. He put, like, it used to be, like, really cutesy, like Oklahoma, where they yeah. were like, I reckon if I see a feller, I will, and soon it's going to be, I put his cock in my mouth right down to the balls. Then I let him finish in my throat. I opened my ass cheeks on the second date. I knew that he was a special DJ, or whatever. So... B-L-U-E, Chew.com, promo code T-I-M to try it free. You have nothing to lose except being an incel. Did you know two or three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? Think about that. Two out of three. The best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. Get treated from home. You used to have to go to the doctor's office for your hair loss prescription. Now, thanks to Keeps, you can visit a doctor online and get hair loss medication delivered right to your home. This is one of my big fears, going bald. I mean, this is a huge fear of mine. Some people do it, and they can make, they can make it work, but so many people can't. So this is literally something that if you're having this problem or if b- before you have this problem, you know, one of my old bosses used to tell me, change before you have to. Great quote. They make it easy and deliver the medication every three months so that you can say goodbye to pharmacy checkout lines and awkward doctor visits. Keeps offers generic versions of only two of the only two FDA approved hair loss products out there. So you may have tried them before, but never for this price. Keeps treatments can take up to four to six months or more to see results. So it's important to act fast. As soon as you start using it, the more hair you'll save. Find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. And nearly 100,000 men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention medication. Listen, nobody wants to go bald. Very few people can do it. As Woody Allen says, you know, I don't know if I'll be the balding virile type. You know, there is a certain Rogan. People like that can pull it off. A lot of people can't. Most people can't. So the reality is you need some hair up top, you know? So the reality is, you know... I know a friend that uses this. This is how we got in touch with the company. It really works. They are paranoid about losing their hair. I'm not going to say who it is. It's a comedian. So the reality is uh, they're very happy with this product. I do not have that problem yet. I mean, my hair is very long. It's luscious. It's luxurious. Um, But lots of people don't have that situation. You know what I mean? Um, You know, so my friend loves this stuff. And we, 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 you know, we're happy to bring this company out there for people that do have that issue. And if you do have that issue, you got to do something about it because nobody wants a patchy head of hair. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Tim Dillon. That is K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tim Dillon. Okay. K-E-E-P-S dot com. Slash Tim Dillon. If you are paranoid, if you see a receding hairline, if you think it's going to get ugly up there, if you're, you know, losing confidence, especially if you're a guy in your 30s, you know, I'm 35, and this starts to become a real problem for people in in their late 20s. So if you want to avoid this, you can save your own hair. It's not a toupee. It's not, you know, any type of surgery. This is saving your own hair if you do it, okay? There's only two FDA-approved hair loss products out there. And this is the generic version of that. It is the cheapest way to do this. So you can save hair and money. It is true. I mean, this is something where even if you don't think you need it, you need it. That's the reality. If you don't know you need it, you need it. Because one day you're going to wake up and all of your hair is going to fall out and you're going to get up and it's all going to be over. I mean, it's all going to be over. All of it. Whatever the it was that you enjoyed, done. Okay? So the reality is, 
You better start taking precautions now with K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tim Dillon. This is, I mean, I'm talking to you out there. I'm talking to the people in the audience that are doing the best they can with what they have. You're doing the best they can with what you have. There's a lot of you out there doing the best you can with what you have. Give yourselves a little bit more. That's the message, okay? Give yourselves a little bit more because you're doing the best you can. But why don't you give yourself something to work with, okay? Don't walk in with a patchy head of hair and bad skin and this and that. Do do something. Get yourself into tip-top shape. Okay? Phenomenal. All right, everybody. He's a longtime listener, first-time caller. He is not dead. So many people messaged me, is Ray dead? He hasn't put out his podcast. We've not heard from him on social media. What say you, sir? I've uh, I've, I've gone over some existential uh, depression. I'm uh, I'm feeling better. People I'm feeling better. People like you do not get to have existential crises. I I don't know what to tell you. I um look. I, I was planning before you called me, and thank you for calling me, having me on the show. Um, I was planning on uh you know restarting the podcast this weekend. Um, look, my my podcast is uh I don't want to like you know liking myself to an Andy Kaufman or a uh, or a Lenny Bruce, but you know I'm a mercurial figure in the world and uh that's why you know that th that's my value i'm not the guy I'm, I'm not the bread and butter guy i'm the guy i'm the spice you add in correct so, you know to the bread and butter. i need to go back underground you're the spice that gets added to the bread and butter where people go wait a minute what's <laughs> going on uh no i told people that i said the great thing about Ray's, you're gonna get what you get when you get it it, it, look, I'm not, I'm not trying to be, you know, uh, a terrorist about it. I'm not trying to be egotistical. But, you know, it's uh, if there's a genius to me, it comes in. You know, I'm, I'm not going to force it. I'm not going to give you. I'm, I'm not Ryan Seacrest. All right. The, Correct. How much you want to make me him now? And it is awkward for many people because many fans, you you share a considerable fan base with Ryan Seacrest. The right. people that would be into what he's doing, you are a close second. Look and uh, look, Ryan does what he does. I'm not going to condemn him for it. Uh, you know, how I, great would it be if you had a meeting with like a manager or <laughs> an agent, and you're like, "Listen, Ryan Seacrest does what he does. I'm not going <laughs> to condemn him for it, but I'm offering something similar that I think a lot of people will respond positively to." If you know economics, uh, I'm a substitution. <laughs> it's, a, it's a clinical term. I know you know what a substitution is, but it's I remember being in economics class in high school, and they told me that Pepsi wasn't a substitution for Coke, but mustard was a substitution for ketchup, which I didn't understand. I still think it's bullshit. This is the kind of thing they teach you in high school instead of how the Federal Reserve works. Right. That's true. That's a very good point. Yeah, I liked it. Immediately, we went from substitution economics to food. Like, that's the only way you can teach Americans anything. They're like, peanut butter is not a substitution for jelly. Listen up. Listen up, you fat fucks. Baked beans, however, is a substitution for Funyuns. Everyone's like, right. right, right. Makes sense. It is Memorial Day weekend. What have you done for the troops? What have you done for this country? What, what? have you done... Uh, to commemorate the, sac the brave men and women who have sacrificed their lives so that we can sit here today. You mean the American ones? <laughs> Not, nothing for the Americans, no. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a certain, certain... Look, I, I respect bravery where I see it. Right. And bravery, you know, you don't get to be us and be brave. There's nothing <laughs> brave about, you know, bombing a village when you're in some kind of, you know, like hamster wheel plane that, you know, can't be hurt. I think it's um, almost more impressive that we're not brave. <laughs> we're like running the world and we're kind of chicken shit. Right. That's con We're terrified of everything in this country. And the idea that we've sold ourselves is like brave and it's kind of even better. What's interesting, though, is you know, some respect to the troops because it's a weird. It's not like because we grew up thinking that that, you know, and they were told us that like this weird 
sheltered myth that's still weird that like basically they would not let a single American die, even if it meant killing a hundred enemy. Right. And like that's kind of the model, like Black Hawk Down, like, no, no, we don't care. Like, we, we'll give their body back. When in reality, they'll let the troops, you know, it's more about like, you know, uh, Mitch McConnell being safe. And we're, fucking, not, you know. we're not ever criticizing the troops. They're, I they're, sometimes am. You are sometimes, and I do sometimes too. But I say about the troops, I will suck many of the troops' dicks, depending on uh, as long as they're good, in good shape. Yeah. Um, but we, we we're always criticizing the government that sends the troops out to do the things. And you gotta admit, sometimes s- certain, certain, a certain subset of troops, much like cops, not all cops, but they join because they want to do certain things. Very true. I mean, sometimes you get in the game because you want to play. Right. Right. And we I'm, can't deny it. Look, it's just you know, and it, it's fine. Look, I'm not even condemning that. I, I get it. I get why hurting people could be fun from a certain point of view. Yes. You know, but, you know, we, we just can't allow it in civilized society sometimes. Do it over there. Yeah. Do it there. <laughs> be a hero and go right. do it there. Don't hurt people not- in your own town. Am I too old to join up at this point? I think I might be. Um, I don't know if it's age, but it's literally <laughs> everything else. Right. About you I and me. To, I feel like I have a lot to offer, though. I have a lot to offer militarily. I be, I mean, I'm all anti-war, but if they gave me the keys, I'll, I'll fucking drop some bombs. <laughs> Just give me some power. I'll fucking, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll make up for, you know, I'm, I'm like fucking, what's his name? I'm like uh, Kiss, Kissinger. I wish we were in Long Island and we could go to like the Blue Angels flyover at Jones Beach. <laughs> you know? I used to see people who went, you know, with different jobs they had. Like, yo, me and my family are going to see the Blue Angels this weekend. So and they get pictures with them. And like 40 year old men. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> We're going to see the Blue Angels this weekend. They fly over and they make us proud. What are are those guys like current Air Force guys? Or are they like drunk? Like, you know, are they kind of like the the ex uh, gunslingers like going around with Buffalo Bill? I mean, these are guys who like did the My Line Massacre, you know? Like these are like these are people who've who've done the worst things. They're probably the biggest war criminals we have. We just put them in blue planes and they do tricks. I do a loopy loop. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, these are people who've probably the blood on their hands is of hundreds of thousands or millions of. And you imagine in Long Island, that's what they say. Like, they point up to the sky to go, you see that plane? The guy in that plane killed 80,000 people. <laughs> He's the first guy to drop Agent Orange. <laughs> he killed 80,000 people. 5,000 of them were, were our own troops who made the sacrifice because we were testing out drugs on them. They can't even spell defoliant. <laughs> Did you ever do anything for Memorial Day? Is Memorial Day something people celebrate? I can't even remember. Yeah, well, we used to have like, um, I used to get, get it blurred together because you know, my uncle Mike would have a barbecue on Memorial and Veterans Day. So start and end of summer. And he had a nice like uh, half acre property in Comac. And uh, let me ask, play was he a veteran? Uh, I think he was a veteran in Korea. He was a medic, but he got you know stabbed in the arm. Okay. So and he had a shitty tattoo of a lizard, like a lizard, on his arm. He also got stabbed there. He had a purple heart. Did it ever get intense when he had a barbecue? You ever throw a few back and it get a little weird? Oh well, he threw a few back. He was definitely uh, on the uh, drunker side of an alcoholic. Yeah. Um, but you know, isn't I mean, it like he was a fun? He was a fun drunk. Yeah. He was one. Of the, he was a fun. He was never. He got. He used to like Tabasco. He was like, he loves spice. He loves spicy food. He loves Tabasco. I remember my grandma complaining once because he like almost died choking on Tabasco. So it's Thanksgiving and uh, yeah, he, he would make scenes in that way, but he wasn't, you know, he wasn't a racist. I how, think he how, probably, probably was, but how do you choke on a sauce? Well, I think it's just going into convulsions. Uh, you know, it's just closing up your throat. Maybe I'm not sure. And he put, he would just like just dose it, like just keep going with it, you know, just just a whole bottle on the turkey. <laughs> hey, R.I.P. Mike, you know, <laughs> R.I.P. Uncle Mike. He's yeah. a good man. You yeah, know? he was a nice guy. He's a good man. There's always like a time, usually if you're at like a barbecue with a guy who served, especially that age group, 
where like he gets drunk and then in the middle you just hear him say something like better man than you but you know <laughs> like some like scent of a woman like outburst well, he would never do that. So uh, now I'm an, uh, an adult man. I'm, I'm looking back for the first, I haven't thought about him in a while. But he was so nice. He was so like always the life of the party and always just like good hearted. So he probably did some bad shit. Yeah. He probably was. You know, probably had, he probably got his fill of being aggressive. Yeah. I don't remember. I remember like, the, like we would me and my father would go. Like when they had these Blue Angel flyovers, like we would hang out with his friend who owned a steakhouse, and 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 a few of his friends, and we would all like drive to uh, Jones Beach, that strip of land in Long Island, and then watch the Blue Angels, and then just drive back to uh, you know someone's house and sit in the backyard, and you know, and I don't I don't remember if that was Memorial Day or Fourth of July. It all kind of blurs. I mean, if you think about it, 4th of July, well, I, see, I, when I was a kid, we always stayed put on 4th of July, but I guess people move around. I, I guess people go to the beach and stuff, but uh, more, 4th of July feels more like, you know, you wouldn't want to necessarily leave, like, j jump houses back and forth, but maybe people do. I don't know. I, I guess we always had it at our house. I just, um, I, what I love about Long Island is there's a, a, an unending well, just a deep well of patriotism. Yeah, well, look, after 9-11, we went driving around just honking our horns, just uh, <laughs> waving flags. Just, you know, it was fun. I mean, like, it was, it was, look, I'm, I'm not saying it was worth it, uh, but it was nice. Yeah. Um, well, we bang, there are people that bang pots and pans now for nurses that can't hear them. Yeah, I mean, I live in Brooklyn. I'm here. Every, uh, apparently, they cheer every day. I've never heard this. Uh, I haven't left my apartment in two and a half, three months. I but, love uh, if you went out and you started banging a pot or a pan, you would be immediately arrested. <laughs> the cops would be like, get in the fucking car. You'd be like, I'm doing this for the heroes. You'd be like, get the fuck in this car. He's talking about his nurse. I think he's part of the <laughs> yeah. hell deal. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to kill this nurse with a pot. <laughs> he's got a weapon. I love you. Yeah. They shoot you three times. He's yeah. got a weapon. I'm trying to do this for the fucking heroes. I mean, look, what's going on? I mean, I think we're at, we're at a third of what we were at the peak in New York. I stopped. Uh, I kind of went through. I, I wherever I was a month and a half ago, I kind of know about as much. I kind of stopped listening to anything. Um, I know a few, and they're starting to try to reopen this shit. So we're probably going to go right back into a pandemic. Uh, look at these split. Yeah, I, I just don't know if the people or the system of government, I don't know what is worth saving here. Oh, that's a great point. Because here's the thing. We have handled this so poorly on every... Like we, do we have to do this? Do we have to ruin the economy? No, if any of us were reasonable. I mean, if Trump and his cronies had gotten tests. But also, if people had just like stayed home on St. Patty's Day, it would have saved a lot of lives. <laughs> right. Not you know, drinking green beer and eggs or whatever they do. Yeah, but uh, people don't want to live. I mean, that's really the crux of it. People in this country have a death wish, and they're allowed to have it, and they should have it. Well, what do we have to live for? Right, right. I mean, what is – look, there's, <laughs> it's one thing – people have this image of Rome. Where like the, the the Huns and Attila was on 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 the footsteps of Rome, and it was all and like we won't we don't mind going out like that in the blaze of glory. They forget that there was hundreds of years of kind of decay and like you know losing your grip before that happened, and that's what we're in. Like there's it's no fun being in the gradual freefall. Yeah, there was hundreds of years in Rome of payday loans and bad <laughs> baby and fucking. Whatever version, just the dumbing down of everybody and Red pipes giving people fucking epilepsy or whatever. Yeah, just the plays being bad, you know, whatever Roman version of theater they had, people being like, these suck now. These used to be funny. <laughs> I mean, the tiger eating a fucking, I don't know, like a fucking, uh, <laughs> No more Christians. They stopped eating the Christians. That's the problem. For a while, they were eating the Christians, and people like that. But then they, they start becoming Christian, and like, no one, who wants this? You know, we, we, we want fucking... Rome was founded on, like, let's kill each other. Let's get some blood in our hands. And they come up with Jesus, and it's like, what? No. Like, we crucified this guy. What do we do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got rid of him. Yeah.
Jesus, or as we call him today, Andrew Cuomo. Right. Uh, maybe Cuomo. don't kill your grandma. Like, the, 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 the idea that, like, I knew that I was, like, having a cosmic break or, like, a split with humanity when, like, people I know and respected, thank God not you because we're usually on the same page, but right. people I, like, know and liked were, like, you got to watch Andrew Cuomo's speech. It is the most inspirational thing you'll ever see. And I watched it, and I'm like, what the fuck are these people talking about? The bar is so low now. If you look, look, if you go back and watch Jack Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, President Kennedy, the speeches were well written. You know, Charles Goodwitt, whatever, whoever he had writing for him, there were good speeches. It was barely inspiring. Obama was pretty good. Like, the, and, they, and they blow away this fucking meatball peddler. All right. This, right. Guy, this guy. But you also can't blame people because, like, they're just impressed that someone isn't literally calling someone, you know, the, the N word right. on, yes. on national television. Yeah. I Look mean, at, which, you, know, you, you know he does it behind the scenes, though, Cuomo. Watch the governor right now. He's He has not said the N-word. This is Alita. This is somebody we can all get behind. He says it behind closed doors with his family. I bet you he says it plenty during a Sweet 16 of Knights of Columbus. <laughs> right. When he's goosing 17-year-old girls. Yeah. Dirty Andrew Cuomo. Let's start a rumor that Andrew Cuomo's a pedophile. <laughs> Just well, a but only over 16 and over. He's not, he's not the other type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's an Ahibophile or whatever they call it. Let's, <laughs> let's start something called Meatball Gate about the Cuomo brothers and yeah. say that they're both running a human trafficking ring. They have a thing where they, have a, they, they hold a meatball between each other's cocks. And then the girl has to come and eat the meatball. You have no idea what the Cuomo boys do. They have something <laughs> called sausage and peppers. Okay. <laughs> You know what sausage and peppers is? When they take their dicks and they're both fucking a girl and then they start cutting their skin up with knives so it's like onions and peppers. They're sick, the Cuomo boys. Yeah. I mean, honestly, his brother, I, I, is he still like like dying in a basement somewhere in like Westchester? The whole thing was fake. Right. He claimed to have coronavirus and he claimed to cure it by stretching. No, he, no, he was like, I do these breathing exercises and it's not just breathe. You have to really breathe. Oh, oh. I'm like, what is he talking about? He, he, he's a silver halide. He, yeah. And then like two days later, he's like dancing in his house and every, I mean, it's like, hey, listen, I don't, I need to see the test result. I, I, I smell a rat. No, sure. Look, uh, Idris Elba probably didn't have it. Tom Hanks didn't like, you know, I think it's a real thing. I do think some of these celebrities, you know, they just fucking said, Hey, you know, we, we need to calm people down. Why don't you go do a little Skype channel thing? Do you think, Bo like, do you think Boris Johnson had it? Or do you think he just spent a few days in a hotel? That dumb fuck wouldn't stop shaking the hands of like dying like patients. Right. I mean, he probably did have it. He's old school British. He's going to the third world and like kissing fucking third world people like lepers, you know? You died for the British Empire. Yeah. Congratulations. I, I like to walk around Mumbai and just kiss, kiss legless, legless <laughs> women. They, they, and they, they're thankful for Britain. They're thankful for it. And I make sure they know how lucky they are. I give them a big wet kiss. They have one tooth in their mouth and I'll lick it. <laughs> yeah, he's a um, he's uh, a, an interesting character. What's your prediction? You know, he was like best friends of David Cameron, right? Like he was in one of the same prep schools and everything. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He like he's fucking street. He pretends to be this fucking like man of the people kind of guy. Yeah. He literally went to like the same exact fucking like was it Wharton over there? Or? Are you telling me? Are you <laughs> telling me that the ruling class has split off into two groups? One <laughs> that pretends to be men of the people, and one that are clearly comfortable being not men of the people, and yet they're both rich. They both protect each other, and they both propagate the same policies. Largely, I'm. Whoa. I don't have any proof yet, but... Go watch the Blue Angels and get proud of being an American. Those guys <laughs> dropped bombs on people and murdered them. They killed all those people that were going to kill us. All those people in Vietnam that were going to come here and kill your family. They killed them, all those kids. Was it impressive when you saw it? I mean, not really even then. I think as a kid, you barely care. You're a kid. You don't give a fuck. You, you just want to go smoke weed. You know? You just want to get high. You don't want to. You yeah. don't care about the, what the fucking Blue Angels are doing. I, mean, I just. Been, this, this I love. 
the displays yeah. of patriotism in Long Island are particularly hysterical. What I love is like you look at Russians. We we, saw, we both watched the Americans again recently, and like you know, so like people who were alive during World War II from Russia, like they embrace like how brutal like we lost. 40 million people. Like, we're all just eating shit and fucking, you know, like eating rocks. In America, like, the height of patriotism was like the, the first Gulf War when, like, no one died. Right. Like, that's patriotism in America. It's just when, like, <laughs> absolutely it, no sacrifice. Yeah. Like, Black Hawk Down, like, I think we lost 10 guys and killed a thousand, and people found that depressing. <laughs> <laughs> they went through a deep depression because of that, and then we pulled out. Like it's a, it's a really a real cuck kind of patriotism. Yeah, it's the greatest. The greatest war is the Gulf War because it's a guy that we installed, put into right. power, supported, armed, tried to take out, didn't take him out. Yeah. Like, like, and then, going into Kuwait. Yeah, right, right. Tricked him into going into Kuwait, right, with Operation yeah. Gladio. I oh, what was, was Gladio? Was that too? Yeah, yeah. But also, like, didn't the fucking. Um, Rumsfeld or whoever, give him the nod. <laughs> like, yeah, fine, go ahead. Like, we're like, we basically implied like we wouldn't care like, yeah. if you go to Kuwait. Just, just do what you got to do. <laughs> we just want the oil. Who gives a shit? Just about? say you're doing a Blue Angels flyover. You, <laughs> just, <laughs> just say you're trying to inspire the people. I mean, people give shit to Trump about having his military parade or whatever, but what's the Blue Angels? <laughs> right, right. I just love the idea of like, uh, remember Jet Blue started doing that low flyover over New York City for coronavirus, and everybody was like, everyone thought 9-11 was happening. They're like, what the fuck is wrong with Jet Blue? I don't look, I mean, it's dumb on their part, but also like after the fifth day, we knew oh planes aren't gonna hit us again. <laughs> they never did in the first place, probably. It's probably CIA. Like you it, like can you stop being such fucking cucks that you're afraid of 9-11 again? Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> you already got the virus thing going. They're not going to fucking bomb. They're not going to fly a plane to a building. Yeah. You can just imagine like somewhere in Langley, Virginia, they're doing a pitch meeting and they're like, what about more planes? Go, we got a virus. It's great. It's <laughs> great. What we got right now is great. They don't leave their houses. They're terrified. They're going to let us put chips in their ass. Like we don't need any planes. <laughs> and there's just a disappointed CIA guy. He's got two planes. Like, like he, he worked hard on this mock up and he's just like, he just walks out of the room and he's like, fuck, you know? He's like, fuck, it's all the germ people now. That's all they care about is the germ people. He's like, oh, I entrapped three Muslim guys last week. No one cares. He called up Larry Silverstein, like, sorry, Larry, it's a no go. <laughs> Larry, it's a no go. We tried. He we tried. He's like uh, he's he's like I handed three Muslim guys anthrax last week. No one cares. No one cares because of this bat disease. Who came up with this? You know. Yeah. I mean, we're just having fun, folks. It's an entertaining program. We don't believe any of this. We believe everything sure. that we're told. Michael Hastings was a fucking Drunk. traitor. He was a drunk. I love drunk that. Trader. I love like going overboard where you're like, you're trying to back the official narrative, but then you go like, wait, 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 wait. you're like, JFK had it coming. And I mean that a random guy killed him. JFK was a rapist and he sold out this country. And what I mean by that, I mean, what do you think happens with the summer? What kind of summer are you, are you expecting to have? Um, uh, not much. Um, I might, depending on the situation, Uber out to Long Island, uh, see some people if it's like, you know, open, but we're pretty much staying inside. I mean, I'm working from home right now. Um, honestly, like the, the, the time blurs for me. It's kind of weird. Like I, it, it's, I mean, I have a, I have a balcony. I can, like, so it's not like I'm just, you know, in a light, I'm not like in a lightless room. Like I used to be, uh, I, I have a sense of time, but, uh, I won't be going. Yeah, I'm not going to be barbecuing every weekend. I just uh, love like not, the idea that somebody calls you to check up on you, and they're like, "Hey, how are you doing?" And you're like, "I'm not in a lightless room like I used to be. I have a sense of time. I have a sense of time now." And it's like it's like what kind of Game of Thrones answer is that? Like the three eyed raven has seen <laughs> the future. And the future is the Blue Angels will fly over Long Island and fat people will say the N-word. Right. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I see myself being a little more careful than a lot of people probably. Well, um, we, we both are not small. No, yeah. You know? And, uh, 
Not particularly healthy. Not particularly um, healthy. I mean, I'm trying. It's very hard. It's very difficult. Right. It is what it is. Uh, so I'm not going to venture out too much. Um, I'm going to maybe do these meals where they send you the meal. Well, like Blue Apron? Yes, but they're they, that you cook. They have ones where it's like meal prep. You just buy a bunch of meals. It's like 9 yeah. or $10 a meal, and you just heat them up and eat them. That's not bad. I mean, uh, what's the company? We'll talk about it later. There's yeah, a bunch of them. About- None of them are sponsoring yeah. the show, so I'm not advertising any of them. No, 100%. Yeah. Um, eat Magic yeah, I mean, Spoon cereal. I mean, keto ce- you yeah. ever eat Magic Spoon keto cereal? Is it good? No. It I tastes like that. Fruit Loops. You like Fruit Loops? Sure. So if you eat Magic Spoon, it's Fruit Loops, but it's none of the guilt. What's in it? What, what, how do you and make Do we have a Magic cold? Spoon ad this week? We do. Well, if Is it we meat? do. What? Is it meat? It's a meat cereal, yes. No, I'm dead okay. serious. It's Wait, it's it's, it's dried jerky meat. Wow! It's it dried. Like fruit it's dried jerky meat, and they toss it in a fruit dust. A fruit dust, but fruit's got sugar in it. But it's not fruit. It's 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 meat that tastes like fruit. So you're eating meat with milk. It's it's a meat. Wait, 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 hold on. It's meat milk. They call it meat milk. No, I'm kidding. I'm joking with oh. you. But what I am telling you. Is about magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon. Oh, but what's in it? What, what are they making out of? They take monk fruit and they use it to sweeten the cereal. That's but what's what, the bread part? What? It's like, instead of grain, what is it? Par- like Parmesan cheese? It's other things. It's a high fat, keto, paleo, everything's okay. That's what it is. Fat? Everything's okay. I'm sure it's fine. I'm just asking. It's is it fine. Of hard and fat? Because what's good about it is you can eat it without the, the guilt because it's it's fat and not sugar. And fat is good and sugar is bad. Right. No, I'm totally I'm totally in. So it's basically chicken skin that's been fried and rolled into a circle. It is deep fried pork products. OK, it's pork rinds. It's pork rinds that have been made into cereal. That sounds like uh, I wouldn't think it would go well with milk, but I mean, I, I like pork rinds. It's chat on. Have you ever had chat on? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's chat chat on. I, but no, I I, I, I'm kidding. Magic Spoon is a, it's a great cereal. Everybody loves it. If you're on a keto or paleo diet, it's an easy meal replacement. What you're able to do is eat it late at night, not feel guilty. If you need something to taste sweet, it's they, they use high quality sweeteners like monk fruit. I understand. I just don't know what the base is. I will tell you what it is. I'll tell you what it is. You want to know, you wise ass? Yeah. It has zero sugar, 12 grams of protein, three nuts. Tell me what it doesn't have. Tell me what it does have. I'm going to tell you right now what it is. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, GMO-free. They've got good ingredients. I'm sure they're great, but are they meat? (laughs) I don't think it's meat. Okay. I'll, I'll eat it. I would definitely go out and buy it. I'm just curious. Well, you don't even have to great. go out and buy it. You go to magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon and grab a variety pack and try it today. That's magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon. And then you buy it right from the... Now, Ray, it is a little pricey. It's $10. But what for is your help? What? For, for how many boxes? No, it's for... You get a box for 10 Okay. No, look, that, that, look, meat's not cheap, so I get it. It's not meat, but it's high steak protein. Yeah, what do you think? Just because they call it cereal, it's going to be cheap? It's steak. Right. It's, it's filet mignon. You're eating. It's a ribeye in every bite. Right. It's a fruity ribeye in every bite. Well, don't, be, don't be cheap about it. If I can go out and buy it. If I can, you want a nice treat? It's going to cost you. I hope they change their motto to just because we call it cereal. Don't mean it ain't steak. It's fucking <laughs> steak. That's the way you got to look at it. It's a great way to phrase it, right? You got to look at it like that. It isn't cereal as much as it is a bowl of high protein, very healthy food. Right. Like steak. It's, you know, it, it, it reminds you of your childhood, but it's actually uh, a, a recently killed goat. Yes. And what's good about it is that you're able to enjoy nostalgia. Exactly. But what I, what I never liked about cereal is that it was never butchered first. Yes, this is butchered and and drained of its blood by being hung upside down. Right. Is it kosher? Yes. Or they kill like a, like a like a dirty animal. It it it, it 
it's it's clean and I believe halal and kosher. Okay, so they have to like hang it up by its fucking foot and drink cut its neck. Yeah, they do every. They don't. The animal doesn't know it's dying. It's slaughtered and then made into a cereal somewhere in a lab. The animal never knows it's going to be cereal. I think they have a talk with it first, but they explain <laughs> to it that we have such a weight problem in this country. And they're, di- yeah, they're dying for the much like those children uh, with uh, Boris Johnson. Yes, dying for the empire. Here's what I will say. The Magic Spoon slash Tim Dillon, all kidding aside, I enjoy the cereal. I tell everyone about it. It's great to get healthy. There's a lot of people out there that want to get healthy but need to eat a sugar cereal like for a child. It's true. (laughs) There's a lot of people that are deeply committed to health but can't not eat Cocoa Puffs. If you're the kind of person who, you know, decides I'm going to lose a few hundred pounds but still be fat but lose a few hundred pounds uh, and, like, has to do it, Eating uh, strange husk oat uh, pancakes. Yes, you might want to try Magic Spoon. Yes, absolutely. We follow some fat people on on <laughs> Facebook, who are what they do is they're losing weight by like subs to like eating the most unhealthy things, but substituting like almond flour and yes. that, and then just still making like pancakes with whipped cream every morning with caramel sauce. But they use like low sugar caramel sauce, and it's like you still fat. It's like it's a. Uh... It's like Crisco, but with caraway seeds in it. Right. <laughs> right. We should really, honestly, it, how great would it be if we became like serial killers who killed fat people? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a great a- pitch. We should pitch <laughs> that show. We are so disgusted by other fat. By the way, and you'll back me up on this. Is anyone more hostile to fat people more than other fat people? Um. No, but especially when you start losing weight, even if you lose five pounds, you become disgusted by people who are less fat than you. Yes. (laughs) I, I, I'm telling you right now, I've been fat for a lot for a long time. The hatred I have of other fat people, there's no way thin people hate fat people as much as I do. There's no way. There's no way. Because thin people don't see themselves in a fat person. They don't care. But when I see a fat person, I'm like, oh, fuck you. Stop wearing that Pugsley shirt. Take care of yourself. Like me and Ray went to the the Pizza Hut buffet in Long Island, right. and we saw all these other fat people walk in, and we're like, "What a disgusting country!" Meanwhile, we're just like fucking dripping pizza sauce into our recorder. Yeah, we're like, "What a <laughs> disgusting country!" The guy who helped us do that episode is now having a baby. Is oh, is he? Yeah, he's having a baby. We gotta say his name on here. I don't know. I don't want to say his name. Okay. This didn't, the, yeah. He also, uh, I heard some things about his, his steaks. His right? Ste- same guy, right? Steaks. Did you have an episode where you were, uh, I don't want to get into it. What? No, he was he eating, eating a steak and he fucking, he got mad about it. Well, he could over, he cooked a, a, a well done steak for me and I didn't, I thought it was rude and I thought it was, should have been called out. Yeah. But now he's having a baby. So, you know, it's, it's nice. Good for him. Is it, is it going to keep it? They don't know. She's right. she's like four or five months in. They're going to make the decision in a few months. Are they going to do a late, like late term thing? They like might do one up? like eight or nine months in. Just go in there and get it. Yeah, I mean, look, why not wait and see if it's going to be a good looking baby? Maybe he's got a great dick. Maybe it's fucking a pretty baby. <laughs> you know, why, why are you going to like, you know, Dump your dump your hand before you know. What if he? What if what? If, what if literally? What if the first thing he said to the doctor? He looked at the doctor. He goes, "You know, we were gonna kill it, but it's got a great dick." The doctor's <laughs> like, uh, "Should I report these people?" Did you see what my Hillary Duff? Did you I see had what a Hillary? Great dick as a baby. Did, what'd you say? My mom always tells me that I, as a baby, had a great dick. Well, it, the doctor when he circumcised me, he used two forceps. Is that true? So she tells me. What a great anecdote to share with people. Thank you. <laughs> That's you, the way you should start your college commencement speech. Listen, <laughs> my mother said when I was a baby, the doctor had to use two, two forceps to circumcise my dick. She also had a friend in her prayer group. I might mention this on an old episode who would uh, who confided to her in her church prayer group that she would, when her baby would cry, not because she wanted to, you know, for her own sexual gratification, but her baby wouldn't stop crying. And the only way she could get it to stop crying was to suck its dick. No. Yes. Ray, no, hundred percent. Ray, Ray, this is what I've been told Ray, by women of the cloth. Ray, we're trying to advertise and make money here. 
<laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean that some woman in a prayer group said that? My mom was part of a, what they call a charismatic prayer group. What which, is which a charismatic meant, prayer group? It's not what it sounds like. They would get together and they would pray very intently for one thing to happen. So like, uh, so we would win the Iraq war or whatever. I mean, so this is the eighties probably. Um, so, so that, you know, Michael Jackson would make, you know, another great album with anything, you know, Grenada would, would, would the operation in Grenada would go well, whatever. So, you know, they, they would get together. And then I guess during the coffee break or whatever, uh, this woman confided to my mother that her baby, you know, I just couldn't get him to stop crying and it was driving me crazy. And look, you know, like some people go so crazy from your baby crying that they shove it in the freezer and they kill it. It's a, it's a thing. It's, it's traumatic to some mothers. So but in this case, she didn't kill how it. Many people, how many people, how many people? Are putting the baby in a freezer because she Enough, cries. According to like you know Sally Jesse Raphael, at least five. Okay, uh, I remember seeing these people on on, on the panel. Um, but it happens. I'm not saying it's common. So I'm not saying it's common for what this woman did. But she went a different direction. She said, "Look, I just I realized I was just trying different things. I put this penis in my mouth and it stopped crying. So now I do that." Did your mother report her? Uh, no, I think she told, I mean, I would have, uh, uh and my I, mom didn't think it was, you know, she wasn't, she wasn't supportive of it. Um, she probably should have reported her, but again, I don't think that this woman was getting off on it, but it's not good. It's definitely rape. How do I talk about Ridge wallet now? <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, look, you're going to need, you, you're going to need a good lawyer if you're in that situation. So keep his card in your Ridge wallet. I mean, the horrors of the world. Are, what what people confide to each other in prayer groups are. Right. I mean, these are all the churches we need to reopen. By the way, these are all yeah. the churches that need their essential. We need to reopen make, them. Make sure you fucking uh, don't don't social distance from his dick. I guess. Jesus, Raymond Kump. I mean, yes. you are. We're gonna we're gonna let you go. You are. It's an you're an amazing character. Thank you so much. Tell the Thank people where me. tell the people where to find. I just can't. I don't know that we can legally top that story on the air. So you can find me at Ray Kump on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, the podcast is Kump. Yeah, uh, up, we've been update a little bit hiatus. We'll come back this weekend. Um, and the Patreon is uh, ramping up. I'm gonna be making up for lost time, so uh, you don't worry about that. We're gonna be. We're gonna have. A, we're gonna have a. A, a week of comp or something like yeah, you know, it's going to be a cavalcade of uh, did content. You, did you hear about this new show where there's a? It's in the UK. It's called Labor of Love, and there's going to be like a bunch of people living in a house competing to impregnate a 41 year old woman. I mean, can I get into that? I mean, but but aren't the chances of the baby being born with something wrong when you're 41 so much higher? They're definitely higher. Um, but I mean, what's one more fucking you know fucked up baby? Who cares? I mean, you know, what, like the show is going to make millions of dollars. You're right. going to tell me that like, uh, so we'll, we'll take care of the baby. We'll, we'll like, they probably have accountants and lawyers like, all right, so we have to like pay for a, a scholarship for this kid to go to like second grade. And then that's it. Whatever. <laughs> we have a second grade scholarship. I mean, oh, I know. it's. It's gonna get a lot worse than that. That's all I'm saying. Let's 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 see some outrage. It get a lot worse than that. If you're offended by that, just know it's gonna get a lot worse than that. It's gonna get a lot worse than that. Ray yep. Comp, I hope people go and find you. Did you watch the video today, the Corona Ball? Oh, you did? No, I, I haven't. I didn't see it yet. It's I'll check doing it out. Very well. You should go check it out. It's a good. Uh, it's a good video. People are enjoying it. I'm sure it's great. I appreciate right, thank it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.